get what you missed on Pearl Overdrive. And so also a question today, Caris, uh, who's part of the Pearl Overdrive and Bogey, he says, my take on the topic about rejoicing when your enemies, uh, you know, fall, it's easy to say no until the rubber meets the road for real, for real. I imagine someone who truly is vile toward you, so bad you almost wish death upon them being in a bad situation that humanly speaking would be funny. On my own accord, it'd be easy to laugh at them. On account of God's grace, I can be kind and loving towards such a one. Sola gracia, only by grace. I agree. And that brings us to our devotional this morning. I did this morning. <laughs> Good morning this evening uh, to our devotional. Jesus is greater. First John chapter 4 verse 4 reminds us in saying, even as we will see how we can navigate through such a topic, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And when we say that we laugh because rejoicing the way mother godanio called in and said rejoicing and uh what we would say that pointing and at our enemies when they fall and saying ha 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 serves you right <laughs> and then going <laughs> it's it's uh it's that's different because we are called to live at a very different pedestal as believers for those who ascribe to Christ, right? Or you refer to yourself as a Christian. Right, isn't it? And look at what 1 John 4 says. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Now, there may be a, a devil out there who tries to drag you down in defeat, but the Bible tells us clearly that we have one greater than he inside of us. His, his Bible also says that there's one who sticks closer than a brother. Hmm. Now, it is important that you and I be established in this truth so that we don't have to be afraid of the devil because Jesus, who's in you, is greater than the devil that is in this world. No matter what the enemy's evil tactics are, he will not prevail against you in this battle. The devil is a defeated foe. Right? Great is he who's in you than all the negative thoughts the enemy can throw at you. Great is he who's in you than the feelings of guilt and inadequacy. Greater is he who's in you than every accusation that is leveled against you. We all know that the devil is the accuser of brethren anyway. Stand strong on this declaration. Listen, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. That is Isaiah 54 and verse 17. Wow. No weapon formed. King James says forged. I think I'll go with that one. Forged sounds like, you know, for those who remember the the series, uh, uh, which series was that? Um, the one that had John Stark. I, do, I forget it. Um, what was it? I, I know some of you are already saying it and, t and looking at your radio and saying, Justo, it's uh, Game of Thrones. Yes. <laughs> yes, GOT. And, and you can remember the way some of the weapons were being forged in fire, right? Now imagine that the enemy is coming in, uh, or some of us would call it uh, like Guinea, we go what here, Kamatiya Rochafu, you know, coming and forging weapons against you. That even that if they lay traps on your way, bang, 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 but that is not the rejoicing I was asking. Because even the scripture that talks about that God will set a table before you in the presence of your enemies it's 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 a little deeper than what we think right it's not so that you will go gloat and rejoice no it's for god's glory so that whoever wanted to do you bad or evil they connive yani they're your enemies it is god who should rejoice does it make sense not us because we are unworthy. What are we rejoicing over our enemies for in the first place? Because no one knows about tomorrow. Right? Tomorrow you teleza and before God you become like a sinner. Straight up. Of course all of us are, are sinners. We have fallen short of the glory of God without the grace. But this, this scripture that talks about that God will set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. It is for God's glory. 
it is not necessarily about you and me. At now, we are the ones who should tell our enemies. You see, hey, as of our God, do is powerful. Oh, hallelujah. I, I, listen, there is a time and a place for that. But with such, we come with humility. Humility. Even if God will place a table before you, a feast before you in the presence of your enemies. Remember Nani, what is her name? Uh, Mam Jemima Thiongo. Akisema takubariki. Hakunata kaizuia. Yes, by the way, for who God bless, no man curse. Right? It, it, so for us, we should be very humble. Even when God sets this table before us in the presence of our enemies, we should come with humility. Because the same scripture says that a broken and a contrite spirit and heart, God will not despise or turn away from. And he also goes on to say that he despises the proud, but he lifts up the humble. And you know, you cannot lie to God about being humble. He sees the heart. For a man, and you can lie to us. I can lie to you. I'm humble. You know, on the schedule, you still, I'm humble. But before God, I am a noisy gong, a clanging cymbal. You guys don't see my heart. I can't see yours. Unless it is revealed by the Spirit of God, right? So in answering that question today, even as we know that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world, let us exercise that. Let us let the, uh, even our enemies see that there is one who is greater, who is living in us. That even as we are rejoicing, we are rejoicing in the Lord, not because God has, uh, you know, uh, vindicated for us so that now we go and, you know, in your face, ha, kind of a thing. That's our devotional this evening. So remind us what we shared, we shared yesterday. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of this he left us was love. Was love. Of course, I remind us, we are not Christ. There's only one Christ. So you cannot save someone. The best we can do is love on them. Just love on them. And let the Spirit do his bidding in their lives. You cannot force Jesus on anyone. You cannot force salvation. You cannot force... Uh, the way of lifestyle when anyone knew prayer that's god's business to deal with hearts and souls not man's we are all fallen so really right let's pray do you have any father <laughs> indeed your word is good for rebuking exhortation so that we as your children will come out as men and women sons and daughters that you're proud of that you can call these indeed are my children. And now today we have tackled something so difficult. It's not as easy as we think that rejoicing over our enemies, we, of our own human fallen nature, we would want to laugh and gloat over our enemies. But Lord, you tell us that this table you set before us in the presence of our enemies, this feast that you have set before us, it is for your glory. It is not for us. We should be humble and broken before you because no one knows about tomorrow so we thank you for today you have been with us from 3 p.m and now just a few minutes six minutes to seven lord to you return all praise glory and honor when we meet again tomorrow we will say thank you just like that one leper who came back out of the ten may we always come back and say thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you for all that you give us in jesus name i pray amen and amen and by the way, if you love to receive Jesus, just say this quick prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive me and wash my sins by your precious blood. And now I confess with my mouth that I am born again and that you are my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. If you made that prayer, you're born again. It's that simple. Just let us know, yeah? Join Justo on Peril Overdrive. Weekdays from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m.